Hello and welcome to an introduction to WhirlyGig. I'm going to take you through some of the features um, that are currently in this latest build uh, and I'm going to take you through as if you've just installed it or if you've just updated it. So if, uh, if, you've, uh, if you've just uh, just installed it, just bought it, and you'll be presented with this first opening screen. So we have welcome to the latest version of WhirlyGig. WhirlyGig is currently in open, uh, uh, early access and what this means is that I'll be updating on a regular basis based on feedback from uh, from the from you uh, the users and also trying to improve it on every version um, so to help with that uh, whenever I update it you'll get a new screen just to tell you what the new features are uh, and if you bought it for the first time then you'll get to see this one so uh, so just reading through it welcome to the latest version of WhirlyGig there have been several updates to the previous versions of WhirlyGig and there have been mostly been the areas of the user interface and style of the player I've taken on board feedback and done uh, my best to make the UI and feel more like a modern player and it, uh, and this isn't the end of the improvements so to continue just click anywhere uh, you can press fire on uh, or X on the actual gamepad I think it's X uh, and also on the Vive controllers basically that button so uh, then click again uh, just to go through that if you prefer the previous UI you can now switch between them by pressing H so I've got the old UI in there as well available uh, and there have been several other updates in, in, this, in uh, this build as well so if I click to continue this is the first page that you'll get now there is several ways in which to control WhirlyGig. One way is to do it with the mouse. So if I grab the mouse and start moving that around, you'll see that the actual, my headset, it's no longer connected to my headset. So I can move it around like so. Um, if I let go of the mouse and wait for like five seconds, then it will attach to the headset visor like so. And if you have a Vive controller, which I have I'm currently using this on a Vive, uh, you can turn this on, so I turn one of the actual uh, controllers on, so you can have one controller on, that will work, like so. Uh, you can have both of them on, and the other controller has options on it as well. So, um, so it, it's designed to have multiple controller types. Uh, many people will be using, won't be using the Vive controllers, so it will be, uh, I will go through the options without the Vive controllers and then look at them a bit later. So that's... Yes, uh, I'm going to switch these off. So, firstly, I'm going to go through the standard setup. So, this is the main page. Uh, what you can do here is you have a simple still, but it's just a standard still to give you some of the ideas of some of the options. Uh, as soon as you start using this, uh, the play, you probably won't see this again. Um, so let me take over with the mouse. Now, all of these options here are clickable. So we have we have an explorer here, which allows you to go into the explorer and find your, the films that you want to watch. You can select the projection type, of which there's a few. Uh, you can change the stereo options. You can change the tilt with these buttons here, the scale with these buttons here, distance with these buttons here, and the stretch with these buttons here, which is relevant for cinema. You can go to the next uh, media in, the, uh, in your setup here, and you can go to the previous one here, and you can fast forward here and rewind here and then you've got play. If you click anywhere outside of these buttons, they will actually also play. Uh, reset orientation, so if I'm looking in a different direction, it will reset like so. Uh, save and uh, load, so you can save any videos that you've got. Uh, gamepad options, so for the Xbox controller, you can set all of your options for that. You can save presets for each of your videos, and you can glue it to your headset so it stays connected to your headset if you wanted to view it while lying down. Uh, so let's load up our first video. So if I click here, we get the Explorer. Now this is a standard Explorer, uh, and it starts in the location your previous video is loaded in. So at the moment, because it's in the program files, it's right at the top. So I can either go up folder, like so, or I can just click to the next drive and then previous drive. So I've got some examples in here. So if I go into media, I've got images, misc, and videos. If I go into videos, there's some videos for you. So let's pick a, an example. I'm going to pick one, which is a film I made a little while back. 
So now I've selected that, it's now loaded. Now we're currently in cinema mode. So if I press play, the film will start playing. If I pause, press again, just a fire button, then it will pause. A fire button exists on the left mouse button. It's, uh, it's mappable on the gamepad controller and it's also the trigger button on the 5 as well. So now we've got it playing, we can skip through. So if I skip to there, there, there. So I'm skipping through anywhere in the video. And once I skip to where I want to go to, like say for instance there. There you go. Continue to skip through. Like so. So say I, for instance, uh, I, I'm happy uh, with this film, but I want to save it to watch later. I can click on the save button here. Go to one of the save options. You can see they kind of get bigger when you kind of hover over them. So you know you've selected them. So if I go there, hit save. And there we go. We've saved it. It tells us the date we've saved it, the time, and the film name as well. If I click outside of that area, We'll go back to the video. Uh, so let's look at loading up a different format. So if I click here, Explorer, I've got a film here by Aaron Bradbury called Vortex. So if I hover over there. Now, at the moment, I'm using the mouse to click around. And you can see there, if I wanted to, if I go outside the area, there's an arrow to say, go back to the main menu. So I can click back there. But if I leave it a, little, a couple of seconds and let it hover to my head, there we go. So now the head tracking display works exactly the same way as the mouse pointer does. So I'm going to look at a Vortex. I'm going to press Fire, which is also space on the keyboard, which I'm using just now. Uh, and now that's loaded up. Now I can use all the controls with the head mounted display. So if I go in here, now this film is actually a fisheye side by side. And I know that because of the video was supplied with those details. So I want to change this to a fisheye first off. So if I go to select projection, these are all the projections that are available. So we have fisheye, barrel, cinema, cinema curved, custom format and room. So I'm going to go to fisheye, like so. You see there it's changed. I'm going to go back to the main menu. Now this is also stereo. So if I hover over there, currently we're looking at mono, so we see both eyes. If I click on there, it's a side by side, as you can see up there, it's quite high. This currently doesn't have any sound, which helps for this video, in fact. So, that's currently playing. I could go in a little bit further, like so. Now, I also know that there's tilt, so this is a fisheye, so it's all around you like so. But I know it's got a tilt on it, so I'm going to press there on that tilt. And there you go, 45 is quite good for this film. So there we are, we have it all set up and we can play it now and watch it and enjoy it as much as we like. So if I pause it again, now this is a 180 degree video. Uh, I could uh, change that if it was a 220, I can just go through there, like so, 180. The radius allows me to change the actual size of the fisheye that's around me. So you can make it really small if we want to. Like so, which uh, you probably don't, you probably can't see that very well, but to me it's really close now. It's like having a helmet on. So we go back up again. Uh, so, say for instance, I've got a lot of videos that are similar to this, and I can go to presets, like so, and we have different pre, I have up to six different presets. So, if I select one of these, I can then save or load. I'm going to go to save. And then that saved the preset. So if I go back to presets, you can see there, preset one, it's a fisheye side by side. Field of view is 180, tilt 43, radius 12, rotation zero. And I can then load that whenever I need to. So if I go to, if I decide to load up another video, so if I go here, go to reason. Now this I know isn't an actual fisheye, but I'll just use it to demonstrate. Whenever you load a video as well, it actually loads as the previous settings if it's the first time you've actually loaded it. So I'm going to change these to the ones that I know are correct. Like so. 
tilt back to zero. Like so. Distance changes the distance. Yeah. Like so. Uh, now I'm happy to save this preset. So again, I've saved it as cinema, scale, tilt, and let's go to preset here and load. And it loads my previous preset. So I can go back to here, load that cinema system like so. So I go in a little bit further. Uh, there are a few other options I'd like to show you. So uh, there, there's quite a few options. There's, the, there's a manual that actually tells you all the explanation relating to this. Um, but there's quite a few other options that I'll, I'll try and explain quickly. So if we have select projection here, so let's go uh, again, like shows us all the different projections. Uh, so we have fisheye, we have barrel. Now barrel is quite a common one. It's mostly 360 degrees, um, 360 degrees, YouTube videos will be barrel. It's also called, often called equirectangular or panoramic. Uh, so that's uh, that's probably the most likely one you'll use for 360 degree film. Um, we have the cinema, which is like I say, it's a flat screen in front. We have cinema curve, which gives it a slight curve to make it feel a bit more uh, comfortable. Uh, and then we've got custom formats, uh, which I'm going to go through to now. So custom formats is uh, uh, expands the actual uh, play it out to a lar much larger variety of different formats. So if I go to one side here, there, now we have custom formats. So currently we have a cube map horizontal T. Uh, so if I highlight that like so, go there. Now as you can see, we've got all of these different custom formats. So if you're outputting uh, different, uh, different formats from like a 3D program or if you've downloaded a Facebook cube map, you can select any one of these or if, for instance, you have a Panasonic A500, these will give you the custom formats to allow you to uh, uh, select them straight off. Uh, we can see they've got a scroll bar here. This scroll bar here, just simply use it like any other scroll bar, sort of hold on to it and then move up and down. And uh, you can go through as many as you like. Something to note is if there are custom formats that aren't listed here and you want one, uh, let me know. Uh, you can add them yourself, but uh, I'm happy to make them. So uh, let me know uh, what cameras you've got and I'll add them to the, to the list. Uh, so there's custom formats. Again, custom formats has the same options as before. So it has the tilt. It has the name of the custom format, radius, rotation that you would get for those options. Uh, I'm going to uh, go to select projection again here, and we have a third, uh, one of the last ones I'd like to look at, which is rooms. Rooms uh, gives you an ability to watch a film within an environment. So at the moment there aren't that many, there are only three, um, and I would like to improve on that in future. Uh, but currently it's, uh, it's experimental, so we're sort of slowly adding to it a bit at a time. So now I've selected rooms, you can see I'm in a living room here, like so. Uh, if I go to room here, it brings up another menu, and you've got living room, bedroom, and driving, like so. So, as you can see, um, I'm in a car, in a drive-in cinema, and watch the film. So I click off of it, and then press play again, or outside. Like so, I can skip through. If I go to room again, I could watch it in a bedroom, and I will be adding to these. I hope to add, I hope to add like one or one every two weeks, so I get a quite good selection of different ones. But these, these are the first ones to kind of give examples. So we can sit and watch a film in in my uh, in in a living room, uh, not a living room, in a bedroom, um, and uh, like I said, there's a living room, bedroom, and drive-in. So, and again, I can save these as presets. So I'm gonna save this as preset. And if I go back to presets, you can see that I've got room, bedroom, and there's no stretch because that's currently the only options you get with the uh, with the rooms at the moment is the stretch. So it automatically 
does the uh, aspect ratio and it should do it correctly but if it doesn't and you need to change the stretch you can just do like so zero is uh, zero is the automatic detection so I might as well save that as well I'm going to save that there and I uh, want to continue watching one go back to that and there we are back in there back watching one back to uh, reason So let me go back to one. If I change the distance, if I change this to cinema, back off again. I'm going to save this and load this one, and it will load back that environment. Go back here. There you go, and it loads back the original settings. If you have any problems let me know and I'll try and fix them as best I can. So some of the other options we've got here, so we have gamepad options. Now this brings up the Xbox gamepad and all the buttons that are available you can set to any different options that you like. So at the moment play, pause, select is the standard gamepad option and you've got reset orientation which is one of the uh, side things. So let's say we don't really need to use loop on certain things so if I click on there we've got all of these options here. So and I'm going to continue adding to them over time. Uh, so we can change s certain hidden options. So we've got stereo separation, we've got uh, super super sampling in there. And you can have the presets menu appear, select menu, hide menu, uh, move backward, move forward, so that allows you to move around. We've got tilt in there, stereo options. Uh, you can actually use this as a 2D uh, player, uh, not using uh, uh, the uh, Vive or the Rift, and have anaglyph so you can wear red and green glasses. Uh, so quite a few options within here and you can select as you can change all the options you like and it will, uh, it will continue to, to work and there are also keyboard options for all of these as well available um, and currently that's 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 currently the um, the way in which the player works uh, a few things to note is um, you want to install this currently uses direct show so you would like uh, you best off installing a direct show uh, play a codec system so something like LAV uh, or um, K-Lite have a kind of uh, installation of all the codecs and plugins that you might need uh, but there's a full-on description on the uh, discussion forum of how to install those uh, without those you won't be able to play a lot of films that you would you would expect to play but um, once you've installed them it should play pretty much anything that you throw at it uh, I'm constantly improving the player so hopefully uh, the quality of playback and everything will increase in each option uh, I'm going to go over the Vive controllers here because we're at the end now so switch the Vive controllers back on again so the Vive controllers we now have the uh, we so I'm going to actually I'll leave it here for left and right uh, for right handed so again you have control of the uh, cursor like so you can press play do the same thing and on the other controller we have load more options as well so uh, so we can uh, open the explorer as well we can change the stereo options we can open save we can set loop uh, we've also got a timeline in here so we can move up and down the timeline as you'd expect and then on the back of the controller we have three other options which are more kind of um, ones that you wouldn't really access very often so you can turn mirror to display off uh, you can reset the uh, position and you can open up the, the gamepad explorer like so um, something to note is that when we work when we're watching a film we might not want all these controls available so uh, the grip controllers these buttons here if you press them it hides those buttons uh, you still get the cursor thing but once you press play that disappears um, and then that will that will stay hidden so you can put them out of the way and then when you want to send them again press them again and they reappear you don't really you can use the whole player with this just one control you don't need this other controller to be able to do stuff because you can do it all through the menu um, but it's a good way to be able to do stuff without having to uh, without having to go to the menu, uh, and that's currently the process. That's currently the player. Um, I'm adding uh, loads more features to it as I go along, 
Uh, there are a load more other features which I haven't mentioned here. If you have any problems, please let me know in the discussions, or if you have any suggestions, let me know, because I'm always open to new ideas, and a lot of the features that are already in there uh, are based on people's feedback. I hope you enjoy the player. If you do like the, uh, do uh, download it and uh, buy it and enjoy it and think it's good, uh, give positive reviews. And if you have any problems, let me know in the discussions, and I'll, I'll see what I can do to help. Um, happy, uh, happy watching. Enjoy your films, and uh, I look uh, look forward to you, your feedback. And I hope you look forward to the updates that I continue to use. So just simply have to quit, and there we are.